Canadian jazz music legend Micah Barnes and he's here today to talk about his latest album Vegas Breeze and what is next for him. Welcome. It is so great to come back and see you again Christine. Thank you for having me. It's always a delight. Yeah so how are you? Not bad. I, I you know what let's see so second week of March now we're in July so March, April, May, June. Yeah, you know, four months uh, watching my industry disappear. Um, you know, it's we're going to be the last back. So that's a tricky moment in time. Between theater and concerts, people are not going to want to gather for a while. So I've had to be really spiritual about the whole thing. Just get really peaceful and, you know, not worry about when, when and just get creative and get into some creative projects. I mean, certainly virtual tour dates and a new album, there's lots to take care of. Yeah, but, uh, but it is, one's heart gets um, full of a weird kind of stress, I find people are anxious and we don't even know why. We're trying to stay safe and keep each other safe, but we're also weirded out. When was the last time we went through a global pandemic? I don't know about you, but this is my first one. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> no, and you know, you are coping well because you've been on a virtual tour across Canada. So, and this is your second one, right? You had a concert. Yeah. Right. We did the National Arts Center, which was so much fun. They do, they're doing, you know, those great uh, Canada Live shows. And that's what convinced me that a, a cross-country um, virtual tour would be, like, doable. Um, we, and so I literally booked shows from St. John's, Newfoundland, all the way to Victoria, B.C. And we streamed from my home studio and uh, over the Facebook pages of each venue, partly as a way to bring focus to the venues because of course it's one thing for an artist to sustain ourselves through this period but a venue has to deal with staff and rent and marketing and all the variety of financials that they're facing so i thought let's support the venues and let's bring the music to their public and their audience and something free that everyone can gather and go yay can't wait till we're back at the Herman's in Victoria or, you know, uh, <laughs> the Carlton in Halifax. And, you know, and that was a really nice way for me to kind of also, you know, keep those relationships alive and say hello to the audience coast to coast. After all, if there is no audience, I don't get to do what I do, right? Exactly. And, you know, what's the feedback been like? Well, it's been amazing. So, first of all, the venues were so lovely, so appreciative. And... Um, and the audiences kept coming with us. So we ended up with like over 23,000 views on the tour. And like, that's, you know, considering that we, it's 14 dates coast to coast, we feel very blessed that people jumped on board. It was early, like it was before a lot of people were doing the virtual tour thing. So we feel a little bit of vindication having gone on the concept early. And um, the most important thing for us was are people enjoying the music? Am, am, am I giving people, like I'm a singer, I'm born to sing. You, you know, a pandemic isn't gonna actually stop me doing the thing I do. Oh, there's this little thing called a virtual uh, tour concept. We're gonna do it and I'm gonna give the people the music, you know? It was, so it was really actually beautiful feedback. Will you continue on doing virtual tours once, you know, back? as normal as we can. <laughs> well, that's an interesting idea. I hadn't really thought about that, but um, you know, wow, you know what? Maybe we will. Like we're planning, we're in the planning stages of more virtual tour dates while we're in the pandemic. But there's, it's interesting because you can reach a new audience and no one, no one was doing this before. So who knows? It might be a nice way for me to break into Asia, <laughs> right? Really? 
yeah. So it's a, it's it's exciting too. And and you know, I want to talk about your latest album. Congratulations! It's Thank reached you. number one in iTunes, uh, uh, across Canada. So tell us, uh, you wrote the song with your brother, um, Vegas Breeze. Yeah. yeah, the title song. Yeah. Well, my brother and I grew up making music together, so it was really a natural kind of fit. Um, Daniel's got a real great sense of melody and groove. And, you know, I tend to bring the lyrics and I just couldn't finish the lyric on this melody he wrote. And I just kept trying. And this was a number of years ago. And it wasn't until we were finishing up the Vegas Breeze album. And I realized we didn't have like that title tune that would, you know, in New York Stories, my last album, you know, at one point there was a song called New York Story and everyone can recognize what the album's about through that, you know, the perspective of that song. And I didn't have something that tied up all the, all the tunes on the new one. But I tried Daniel's old melody and it worked perfectly. It just felt like a pizzazzy kind of swaggery, sizzling, popping kind of, you know, old school Vegas, ra you know, ra rave tune. And so we did it up in a kind of a Bacharach pop uh, style on the album. And live, I do a swing version. So it's a very fun moment for me on the album where I get to sort of use my lyrics to tell the perspective of why we all still think Vegas is a fun idea all these decades in, you know? I want to take you far away from it all Down in the desert, there's a place that I know Hotel pool, it's a great big swinging playground. And if we miss our play back home, oh no, where we can buy me That Vegas breeze, the lucky stars have brought you to me. The future's ours if you believe the big dreams can come.
you know, you were, looks like you're having fun, you know, and, and it's, it's, uh, you know, the video, it looks like it was fun making and, and, you know, working with your brother. And uh, is this your first time that you worked with your brother? Actually, no, Daniel was my drummer for years. And he, he and I collaborated on a lot of songwriting and he helped co-produce New York stories. So he's been a really vital musical collaboration, but on the new album, he needed to make his own record and it was time for me, for me to make my own record. So on this one, although we wrote the title track, we went our separate ways and I worked with a different drummer, Al Cross, who's legendary in the business. He used to be with Big Sugar and you know he's one of Canada's finest drummers. And so Daniel said, hey, listen, if I'm not doing this record, you should work with Al. <laughs> so we did, we called Al and I'll never be sorry about that. Yeah, so that's great. And and it's a tribute to the 60s and what Las Vegas was. And that's it. That's so it. I tried to, uh, I wanted to recreate the feeling. So on the last record, you know, it was like a 3 a.m. and you're in New York and you stumble into a jazz club and like everyone's all relaxed and maybe, you know, the band is playing and it's romantic, but it's a very intimate record. And on this, and I realized for this album, I really wanted to like express the more sort of bluesy, intense kind of showman that is also a part of my musical personality, you know? And uh, so we found a bunch of songs. Oh, I'm sorry about that. We found a whole bunch of songs that were like kind of showroom classics that weren't the Rat Pack you know, playlist, because everyone's heard the same Sinatra tunes over and over again. I just thought, no, 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 no. If I'm going to do, if I'm going to pay homage to this era, I want interesting chestnuts from other people's repertoire. Like, so I started digging into Nat King Cole, you know, Mel Torme, who was one of the masters of the, of, in the 60s uh, Vegas world. Also Judy Garland, who was one of the big headliners, Lena Horne, and Peggy Lee, who always had exceptional material. In fact, I'm recorded, I recorded two songs that were initially introduced by her uh, on this album. And, you know, we just kept looking for unique material that would fit me and really allow me to be all that I am as a musical personality and not hold anything back, you know? Yes. And that, you know, the song, um, uh, what's it, When in Rome, I Do As the Romans Do, Yes. Yeah, tell us about that one. That was, I love that video. <laughs> Can you believe that lyric? It's so much fun. <laughs> Is this legal? Should I be able to say this? You know, it's such a, it's like the international playboy who's getting away with it. <laughs> that old yearning wrong and that 
naturally when in Rome I do as the Romans do Again in Rome, in somebody's den in Rome. Well, pussy cat, when in Rome, I do as a Romans disregard the signs and the omens. When in Rome, I do as the Romans do. That song was introduced by Peggy Lee. It was written by some wonderful songwriters that had created classics for Tony Bennett and Sinatra. Like, you know, it was one of the great songwriting teams. And Peggy's version wasn't the perfect recorded version. She introduced it, but it was Tony Bennett and Barbara Streisand who both recorded it later and who made much more of a classic of it. So I took it and I just kept thinking like, I want a romantic kind of sensual vibe. And I thought, well, there's nothing better than a bossa nova for that. Mm -hmm. So my band and I got onto that bossa nova kind of feel, you know, and then doom, 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 boom, boom, doom, doom, and kind of like that sort of everyone's dressed up and drinking and, and having a lovely, romantic, sophisticated time. And I'm crooning them this song that's all about international cheating, <laughs> internationally. <laughs> I just thought, well, that perfectly sums up the mid-60s swagger, you know? <laughs> yes, yeah, and going down memory lane. And what That's it. People to get from your music, this album particularly. Will you say that again for me? Oh, yeah, what would you want people to get from your, your latest album? Like, what's the message? That's fantastic. You know, this one is a celebration of life. It's real different from my other albums. This one, I really road tested all the songs. In fact, the last time you and I talked, I was out in BC and I was probably playing some of the songs already for audiences because I like to road test them and see now which songs are giving people joy, you know? So our first single, which was a real rave up version of Frank Sinatra's That's Life, it's one of those sort of Declaration of Independence and Philosophy of Life songs. And that's, I think, very much what defines that mid-century Vegas era. You know, the entertainer gets on stage and says, this is how it is, and this is what it's all about. And the audience goes, yeah, you know, I believe in you, that's just like me. And everyone sort of celebrates that kind of great American individuality. That's very much what those songs do. So. That's what I want to do. I want to inspire people to live more of life, take a bigger bite and enjoy the heck out of it. That's kind of what the, the message of the Vegas Breeze album is. And perfect timing, really. Oh, thank you. We'd had no idea that it would end up being such good timing to take a refreshing. It's like I wanted people to have a really refreshing, big bubbly drink right in the middle of this, uh, you know. <laughs> of this challenging time. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, and so if people want more information, where can they go to, you know, to purchase your album? Sure, um, mikabarnes.com has all the info. You can buy the music there, you can find for the download is there, the videos are all there. So it's kind of a one-stop shopping, mikabarnes.com. And as it turns out, like 
we've had some beautiful streaming. The video ended up with over 100,000 viewers. Like we, People have once again just blown my mind in the way that they've embraced this music. I mean, you make music never knowing if people are going to relate to it or not. But it seems that even with the weird timing of this release, people really have felt it was like a, a breath of fresh air, if you'll pardon the pun on Vegas Breeze. <laughs> we want something to celebrate and use it. Yeah, we all need it right now. Yes. So it's it's great. And what is next for you? I mean, you you also is a vocal coach. I mean you That's right. Yeah. Well, I've been coaching all the way through uh, over Skype and FaceTime and Zoom, and it's been great. I've been coaching singers in New York and Australia and Regina. I mean, like, you know, basically now I can coach every, everywhere. It's the same as if I'm coaching someone in my hometown. Um, and what's coming up next is in the fall, we're going to release a new single, and we're going to have a brand new video attached to it which we're very excited about. I had to learn Latin dancing for this video. So I'm just saying, it's a really big deal for me. <laughs> you know, new skill set. <laughs> but you guys will see if I did a decent job or not when it comes out in the fall. I'm sure it will be. <laughs> That's great. That's wonderful. So yeah, so I, I really appreciate your time and um, I look forward to you know, speaking with you again, maybe in the fall, we can check back in. I would love that. You know what? That would be a pleasure. By then, hopefully we're all, maybe we've turned the page and we're in the new chapter by then. Yes. So keep safe and healthy. Thank you. You too, my darling. And thank you so much for having me back. It's always a pleasure talking with you. Likewise. Thank you. Okay. Ciao. Bye.